Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this stylus grass in Blender using geometry nodes. And you can change all the properties right here. And this is what it will look like in the end. So let's just get started. So right here in a new Blender scene, we can delete the default cube by pressing A, X and delete. And then we can add in a plane with shift A. And we can scale this up by about 10 times. So it's 20 by 20 meters and control A to apply the scale. Then we're going to go over here and set this to the geometry node editor and just make this a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing and just click new. Call this stylized grass and this is where we are going to add our nodes. So the first thing we need to think about is uh, where we want the grass to be. So for that we are going to use a distribute points on faces node with the density we can uh, increase the amount or decrease the amount and this is pretty much just the particle system that you can find right here. Uh, on every point here we are going to add a, a blade of grass and for the grass we can use a curve line and if we preview this by pressing ctrl shift and left click uh, with no triangular enabled by the way we can see this curve line and we will just change this to direction so we can change the length really easily. To add some more detail to this we can resample the curve and what this does is basically when we add a curve line there are only two vertices and with the resample curve you're basically just subdividing it. So we can set the count to four so we have a little bit of geometry in between and what we're going to be doing is just placing this on every single point uh, the resample curve is what we're going to be using to displace it so that's for later but right now we just want instance on points after the distribute points on faces so you can place this here and just get this curve to the instance and as you can see we have a lot of curves on the points so as you can see we have a point and we have a curve and it will all be combined right here to give this geometry we first need to do the displacing uh, since otherwise the geometry won't make sense since otherwise we will be displacing the individual vertices instead of just uh, the batch of vertices that we want to replace so for example if i add in a cube uh, if we do the mesh first then if we displace uh, this will move separately and it will all be displaced, uh, not uniformly. But if we do this before we realize the curve, it will just be moved like this. And this is what we want. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to displace it first. So first we need to realize the instances, otherwise it will only displace uh, this curve right here, instead of all these curves right here. To displace this, we are going to get a set position node. And with the offset, we can change the location of the vertices of the curve. To do this, we can just drag out and add a combine XYZ node. So we can change it on uh, every single coordinate. And then just make some space here and add in a Musgrave texture to the X axis. And as you can see, this creates a lot of noise. We can change the scale to be about 0.25. And this already looks really cool. It looks really windy. If we change this to 4D, we can actually already see how the wind will move. But of course, we are not there yet because we still need to still need to make the bottom vertice static. So the origin of the curve doesn't move if I change the seed. So what we're going to do to uh, keep these curves from moving at the bottom is just using a spline parameter node. And what this basically does is if we preview this, this factor, and then preview the curve line, as you can see, it starts out uh, being zero and at the top it's one. And then we can just multiply with that value with the Musgrave texture. So add in a math node, set this to multiply and use the factor. And as you can see now, the bottom vertices stay static. And this is exactly what we want. Now we just have really nice windy grass. So now that we have that, we can just add some geometry to this. And to do that, we can set a curve radius first and then convert the curve to mesh. And for the profile curve, we are going to use a curve circle set to four resolution. We can change the radius a little bit so we can see it better, but it's probably going to be a lot smaller. The reason we set this curve radius is because we can't actually uh, dynamically change this radius. So I wanted my grass blades to be bigger on the bottom 
and smaller at the top. So I wanted to change this value in line with the spline parameter basically, but you can't do that because this is a round input. And that means it's just one number. It can't be dynamic. It can't be based on position or something. It has to be one number across the board. So that's why we set this curve radius. So we are just going to grab this factor again and add in a multiply add node and just set this to minus 0.5 so it's inverted and add about 0.6 to this you can set this to the curve radius and just set this radius to 0 0.01 or 0.1 and as you can see this adds a lot to the grass plates we can also check fill caps so the ends of the grass are filled in and this is basically our grass to give these more detail we can just increase this resample curve as you can see but i suggest you keep this at four uh, five is fine as well but four just gives you the best performance and three is just too ugly to finish this off we can set a material i like to set shade smooth and turn this off because I like this better. This just looks a little bit better to me. And then we can add a joint geometry node. So we can just grab this beginning geometry and add this again. And we have the plane as well. And this is essentially everything we have to do. But we can also do something else to this. So we can uh, just select everything and control G to group it together. And then we can just add some things to this. And what I want to do is if I have a cube, which is, uh, for example, a rock or something, I want the grass around it to disappear and kind of be uh, pushed towards the other direction as if there's something heavy on it. And we can actually do that. So the first thing we need to do is just make a collection and call this avoid because we want to avoid this collection. Let's place it in there and have uh, this cube in there as a placeholder. What we can do then is add in a collection info node and set this to here. And this collection should just be our avoid collection. Set this to relative. So instead of having the absolute location. So if I place my cube here, the absolute location would just be the middle. But the relative, it will be here. We can use this to realize the instances with a geometry proximity. We can get a value from 0 to 1, where uh, 0 is the closest to the face and 1 is just farthest away. But we need to invert this. So to do that, we can add in a math node, set this to multiply add, get this distance to the value, and then the multiplier to minus 0.25. And the add end is just whatever you want, whatever looks good. And then we want a align Euler to vector get this value to the um, factor and get the position to the factor. Set this to Z and just input this to another align Euler to vector to the rotation, set this to Y and the pivot to the Z axis. We also need another multiply add node for uh, deleting the geometry. Uh, so deleting the points here. So we can use the distance again to the value and just the same thing but for this one, I suggest you add a math node to kind of make this uh, smoother. So get a value and multiply it by about five. So in this group node, we need a couple of things. First of all, we need to add in a delete geometry here for the points. And we are just going to get the selection to the group input and just drag this to there. As you can see, my selection is a little bit much. So something like this will do fine. And this just deletes everything that's close to our face. And we can change this dynamically by user input right here. And then the second thing we need is the rotation to these instances. Because I want uh, these points to be more rotated that way. So to do that, we can just get the rotation and grab this rotation and set it to here and as you can see there are some things to fix and i'll just find out whatever that is i think we need to just clamp this so right now everything is uh, rotated this way after that so after this 0.5 which is the add end 
everything becomes negative so it's going the opposite way so that was our issue just uh, clamping and now whenever we change this add end we can change how much it's get rot it gets rotated and if we now move this we can see our grass moves with it which is really cool and one thing i haven't been able to fix is that whenever you have zero objects in your collection just everything gets deleted so i also have to add in a dummy object so a cube scale to zero and then uh, place somewhere like a minus 100 and just call this don't delete so you always have a placeholder object you can also set this to uh, non-selectable and just hide this everywhere so this is pretty much it for the nodes we can uh, group this together again and then just set in all the values we want to change which is only uh, this one this is our avoid node group and this is our grass growth node group in here we can also change the scaling to be a random value a little bit smaller somewhere just randomize it a little bit so the minimum should be something like 0.8 so there's a little bit of difference in there as you can see we can just set this here in a group input and connect them all so they're uniform let's rename this to scale set the scaling to the group input let's add it as well and there's a lot of things you can do with this so for example the w factor is just a seed you can change that as well i want to be able to change the material of course and this is pretty much it maybe the scaling as well and just connect these all right here uh, by the way this will also be available on my gumroad so you can download it there i think it's already been available there for a couple of days but if you want you can just uh, support me on gumroad under monthly support and you get all my project files for free or not for free because you pay for it but you get what i mean you get all my project files also the things i work on in my own time you get there as well so this is pretty much it for the grass uh we can animate the seed or yeah this one this is the animate just add in a driver hashtag frame and right now it moves really fast but we can just divide this by about 10 or something and it already looks really cool and we have this rock in the middle so right now for the uh, material we can just add in a new material called this grass and for this we can use uh, two different texture types you can use a muskrat texture and just uh, follow along with that but i'm going to use a voronoi texture because i like that a little bit more but you can use a Musgrave texture as well and do the same thing I'm doing right now. Doesn't really matter. So for the Foronoi, I like to set this to smooth F1. So if you go into material preview, we can preview the color. And as you can see, it's really nice and smooth. And I want this. So we can just delete this, add in an omission, and add some texture coordinate mapping with Ctrl T. Note Wrangler add on enabled, by the way. And just use this with a scaling of about 0.2 and use the color to a map range set this to the fact uh, just uh, float and color to the value uh, because we want to clamp this for the hue and saturation just set this to the color and get the result to the hue so i want to get a kind of green color and change the hue based on this value but I don't want to change it from zero to one with the color. So what I can do is just from min max. So from zero to one, we are going to change the zero. So the absolute minimum to about 0.2 and then the max to about 0.5. And as you can see right now, it's a lot closer to the original color. You can also just change this to be about 0.3 or something whatever you want you can add in a new map range node and get the color as well and we are going to use this for the value so make uh, different things a little bit darker but i want to set this to max of one so full brightness and then a minimum of 0.25 and we get a color like this and then you can uh, just change the color dynamically so group this together again Control g get the color there and just set this to be whatever color you want can set this to uh, w so we get a seed value so we can animate this as well so with the same driver by the back then you can also animate this material right here and change the color however who wants 
of something like this. And then in the geometry node uh, modifier, we can just set the material to be our grass and the grass will get the same material. And this looks amazing in my opinion. So you can get this kind of foresty color or a fall color. And if we play, we can see our grass moving and also the texture animating. So this was it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope to see you in the next video. And leave a comment with what you want to see next. I want to make a lot more of these stylized tutorials. So next maybe a stylized rock generator in Geometry Notes. Something like that. Just to make a, a bunch of stylized things. Look forward to hearing from you what you want to see. And I'll see you in the next one. So goodbye.